وَأَقُولُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَرِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ وَأَقُولُ قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَالْمُصْطَفَى الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّلُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was given by Allah سبحانه وتعالى the best companions on this, this earth He was given by Allah سبحانه وتعالى the best men and women of any generation of the humankind. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِي The best of generations is my generation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ And then those that come after them, and the, then those that come after them. And today, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وجل, I wanted to talk to you about a certain companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with an amazing story. He has an amazing biography. And there's, it's incumbent upon any Muslim to know a little bit about this certain Sahabi. Why? Because in its story we find so many benefits. Sacrificing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Searching for the truth. When knowing the truth, acting upon it. And a lot more benefits that is going to come up inshaAllah in this story. And I'm talking about no other than Salman al-Farisi. Salman al-Farisi and he used to also be called Salman al-Khair Abu Abdullah al-Farisi he was a Persian man who left his country left his home left his city in search of the truth in search of the true prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam now this story has been narrated by Salman himself in different riwayat in different narrations and the best one according to some of the scholars such as As-Sakhawi rahimahullah Shamsuddin As-Sakhawi in his book التحصيل والبيان في في سياق قصة السيد سلمان. That's his book, and he wrote a whole book about Salman al-Farisi رضي الله عنه. And he said in this in this book that the best narration أقواها إسنادا وأحسنها اقتصاصا. The best in terms of chain of narration and the best in terms of the story itself and how consistent it is is this, the narration that he Salman I mean told to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this narration is narrated in a lot of books, but mainly Imam Ahmad rahimahullah in his book Al-Musnad, he mentions this narration from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum. Uh, in a long narration he says that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum said, he said, Salman narrated to me, meaning told me his story from his mouth, min fihi. And then he narrated the story of uh, Salman radiallahu anhu. And Salman obviously he has a lot of ahadith. He's reported a good number of ahadith. One of them mainly, which is a really famous hadith, is the hadith that he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah hayyun kareem. Inna Allah ha is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hayy and generous. He shies away from his servant. If he lifts his hand up to make dua, that he lets him return his hands sifra zero empty without having answered his dua and there's another beautiful hadith narrated also by Salman radiallahu anhu he says uh, Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir radiallahu rahimahullah sorry he says he says that Salman once visited a man called Shurahbil ibn al-Simit and this Shurahbil rahimahullah was posted on the front lines meaning he was basically protecting the borders of the Islamic kingdom the Islamic Khilafah at the time and he found Shurahbil and he saw that it was difficult for him. And it's a difficult thing to do. You need to always be alert. You need to always be ready. You might be posted uh, far away from your family, your children, your village, your friends, your relatives, all of that. So it's a difficult thing. And he saw that it was difficult upon them. So he said to them, Ala uhadithukum bi hadithin samiatuhu min Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Should I not tell you a hadith that I've heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And obviously, at the time, they, they, these are righteous men. So they love to hear a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they said, Bala. And he said to them, Samiatu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I've heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Ribat wa yawmin fi sabilillah. To be posted on the ribat, to do ribat, meaning to be posted on the front lines, protecting the borders. Just one day, 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than to fast a whole month and make qiyam of it, like make, making night prayers, pray, praying night prayers. So one day in your hala, in your condition that you're upon, oh, Shirah Bil and your companions, is better for you than to pray and uh, fast for a whole month. And this is something amazing. And this shows you, we, we, just as a side benefit, this is the condition of the scholars, the du'at, people who, wishes, who wish khay for other people. And this is what your knowledge should teach you. Look how, ha look how he saw Salman radiallahu anhu. He saw them right now, you know what? In a bad state, in a bad condition. They were tired. They, were maybe, they, they had maybe been posted there for several weeks or several months. So he used the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him in order to lift their spirits. And this is something that a lot, a lot of times we miss out on as du'at, as tulab al-ilm, students of knowledge, as scholars even sometimes, where we as students of knowledge, sometimes you use the knowledge that we're supposed to lift the, the, the spirits of the people of, we use it in order, in, in, sometimes in a bad manner to sort of crush the, 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 the spirit of the people. And this is something that's really wrong. And we as students of knowledge need to revise. Our knowledge should be uplifting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and one of our scholars in Medina, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, he used to tell us when we, whenever we go back to our countries, use, like, let people feel the spirit, the ruh, the spirit of ilm, the spirit of Medina when you go back, meaning give them good tidings, give them good benefits, guide them, be happy for their success, take them away from the bad stuff and so on and so, so forth. So this, is, this was just a side benefit. Now, as, as we said, this is some of the hadith of the Salman radiallahu anhu, and there are a lot of hadith that he's, 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 he's narrated a good number of hadith, but just as a side benefit, these are some of the hadith that he's, he's narrated. Now, the story of him, he actually narrates it himself, he says, Kuntu rajulan min asbihan. He says, I'm a man from Asbahan. And Asbahan is a place in Faris, Persia. He says, Min qariyatin yuqalu laha jay. From a place, from a village called Jay. And um, there's some discrepancies between some of the narrations because in some of the narrations, Salman actually says, Ana min Ramahurmuz. I'm from the city of Ramahurmuz. It's also in Persia, but it's not Asbahan. It's, it's a, pl a place that is different from Asbahan. So now the question becomes, where is he actually from? And some of the narrations, and this is one of the benefit of gathering all the narrations of the one and the same hadith. So sometimes one hadith has been narrated in different times, different scenes, different scenarios, and we need to gather them to get a whole picture of the hadith. So one of the narrations, he says actually, he says, I am born in Ramahurmuz. As for my father, he is from Asbahan. So this one clears up the different narrations. So when he's talking about that he's from Asbahan, meaning him and his family and his father, they're from Asbahan. But as for him, he grew up and was born in Ramahurmuz. And he says, وَكَانَ أَبِي دِحْقَانَ قَرْيَتِي And my father was the Dihqan of my village. And as the, the, the word Dihqan means that, as Ibn Al-Athir says in his book, Al-Nihaya fi Gharib Al-Hadith, he says, Dihqan is Ra'isul Qariya, the chief of the village. So look, and this is important, and I want you to remember this as we go along in the seerah, as we go along in this biography. Salman radiallahu anhu is the son of the chief of the village. Meaning obviously, he's living a luxurious life, he doesn't want for anything, his father's obviously rich, and this is what he says. He says, وَكَانَ لِي أَبِي ضَيْعَةٌ عَظِيمًا And my father had a, a, a huge properties, cattle, sheep, whatever you can name. عَظِيمًا he says. And he says, my father loved me. My father loved me a lot. And his love for me reached to the level that he would imprison me in my own house as one would imprison a maid. And this does not mean that we imprison maids, but it means that he used to not let him leave the house for fear that he would come to harm's way if he would leave the house. Someone might kidnap him, someone might harm him, something that might happen to him. And that's why he would order him to be in the house. But he says one day, he was preoccupied by, by some of his buildings and he couldn't attend to his uh, cattle and sheep and what, you, what have you. So he says, Ya Bunay, oh my son, uh, I'm busy today, so I want you to go 
and check on the cattle and the sheep and everything. And I want you to do this, this and that. And he sort of detailed some, some of the things that he wanted done. Salman says, li, I went to go see them. Bi min nasara. So he passes by this church and he hears the prayer. So he says, and he, he gets curious. So he says, عليهم, I went in. I went in to see what they were doing. I liked their prayer. I loved it. And I sat there, he says, I never left until the sun set. I never left until the sun set. And he said, I forgot completely about my father and his cattle and sheep and I never went to it. He said, so I went back to my, no, before he went back to his father, he said, I asked them, ما أصل هذا الدين? What's the origin of this religion? And they said, أصله في الشام. Its origin is in Sham, which is Syria. So he went back to his, his father and the father, he was really distressed about his son's he, the, the, the fact that he was missing. So he said, where you been? I, I sent people after you. Where you've gone? What's the, what, 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 didn't you do what I ordered you to do? Didn't you do what I ordered you to do? So he said, Father, I'm going to be honest. I went out, I saw the church, and I saw the people praying, and I liked it. And that's why it kept me from doing what you told me to do. And he said, the, and he told his father, he said, Father, their religion is very nice. He said, the, the religion is very nice. And the father sort of perceived something here. And he said, Deen, ya bunay, deenuka, Your religion, and your, the religion of your forefathers is better. And this is something that we need to stop. This is something that is so common that we need to stop and ponder upon. Like, look at what he's saying. He says, Deenuka wa deen abaik. And this is something that's really common when going away from the truth, sticking to you what you and your forefathers have been upon. We found our Aba, our forefathers, on a Ummah, on a path, on a Milla, on a, on a Deen. وَإِنَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ مُقْتَدُونَ And we're going to follow their footsteps, even if it's wrong, even if it's wrong. And this is something that's very dangerous and very, like, it's a red flag, basically. You need to be very careful. And sometimes people study the deen and know the ahadith and know the verses, but what? They, they can't bring themselves to leave off what their parents and their forefathers were upon. They know that this is the true religion. They know that this is a deen al-haq, but his father is from another religion. Or sometimes even in opinions when it comes to aqidah, Islamic creed, he knows that this is the truth. But he says, what? No, this is what my father taught me and I'm going to stick to it. And sometimes people put their heads in the sands and don't even want to learn anything other than what their forefathers have been up to. This is wrong. And this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned about in his book. So the father becomes scared and as Salman says, he chained my leg. So he changed it. And then he was chained in the house. And this is also something that's really common. When you don't really have anything to offer when it comes to evidence, proof, arguments, you resort to these types of things. And this is really common. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. They could not argue with him because they knew he was the Sadiq al Amin. So in the end, their only recourse, action of recourse was to kill him. And that's when he left Medina, alayhi salatu was salam. And this is the, when people don't have anything else to say or they can't offer any arguments, any logical arguments, any proof for what they're saying. This is what they always tend to do. This is their last action of recourse, basically. So Salman continues and said, I sent word to the Christians in the church and I said, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ رَكْبٌ مِنَ النَّصَارَى تِجَارًا If they come from Sham, a, a caravan of like tradesmen, which is what was common at the time, he said, then let me know. So they said, okay. And as soon as a caravan showed up, they let him know. And he said to them then, إِذَا قَضَوْ مِنْ حَوَائِجِهِمْ وَأَرَادُوا الرَّجْعَةَ إِلَىٰ بِلَادِهِمْ If they if they're finished with whatever they need to do and want to go back to their countries, call upon me. So they did. And he went with them all the way to Sham. And now from uh, Asbahan, or from Ramahurmuz to Sham, it's not a small distance. It's a big distance, almost 1,000 kilometers, if not, if not more. So he traveled all that way in search of the truth, in search of the correct religion. And when he came to Sham, 
He said to them, من أفضل أهل هذا الدين? Who is the best person who is upon this religion? Religion of Isa alayhi salam. So they said to him, they say, al fil kanisa, the priest in the church. So he went to him and he said, I am from, and he told him his, his story. He said, I'm from Asbahan and I want to join your religion and I want to be with you. I want to akhdimuka, serve you, wa ta'allam mink and t- learn from you, wa usalli ma'ak and pray with you. So the man said, fine, come in. Salman says, لكنه كان رجل سوء. He was a bad man. Why? كان يحث الناس على الصدقة ويرغبهم فيها. He would tell the people to pay charity, give charity, and sort of make it desirable to them. It's good to pay charity and would mention whatever he could mention from the Bible in, in, in the verses of charity. And he said, but when they gave him, he would tre- keep it as his own treasures. And Salman says, I, I counted seven qilals. And a qilal, jam'u qulla, it's plural of qulla, it's a big thing that you keep stuff in. He said, I counted seven of them, filled to the brim with gold and silver. So the man passed away and when the other Christians came to bury him, he said, this was a bad man. Why? He said, he used to tell you to give him sadaqah, give him charity. And when he took the charity, he did not give it to the poor people, the needy people. He kept it for himself. And they sort of doubted him. So they said, how do you know this? He said, I'll show you to his treasure. So he took them and he brought out all the gold and silver that they had, he had kept from the people. And then they said, we'll never bury this man. So they sort of crucified him and left him. And they changed him with a, another man. Now, here's also a, a part that we can ponder and reflect and take benefit from. Salman radiallahu anhu, when he came to the city, he said, who's the best person in this religion? And they said, the man, the priest in the, in, in the church. Now, he could have let that man who's according to the people of the city, he could have let that man who's according to them, the best man, he could have let him represent the whole religion and say what? This religion is not for me. It's a religion, it's a religion of cheaters, religion of people who are dishonest, bad men, and so on and so forth. If this is their best man, let's not just talk about then the rest of the people, right? He could have said that, but he didn't. He did not let one man represent an entire religion. And this is a fault people often like يقعون في, they, they often fall into this mistake, which is they let one experience, one encounter with a religious man or a good man who might be righteous in the eyes of the people reflect upon the whole religion itself and say what? This, is, this man is uh, the best of the, the, this religion and that's why the religion is bad, basically. Or sometimes the person might even be a Muslim but he's met a religious man and said, religious people are really bad. Look at this man, look at that man, and sort of regale or retell encounters with certain people who might have treated them bad, or even might have just had a bad day, might have a bad week, might have a certain situation. So this is something that Salman could have done, but he didn't do. And as an advice to us, me and you, don't do it. Because tuhram min al-khair, you might lose out of the khair that comes after this man. Look at Salman. After this man, they changed him with another man. And he said about him, I loved him as I never loved anyone else. He said he was the best man in their religion. He said in the, in the hadith, he said, I have not seen a person who doesn't pray the five prayers. Obviously, he's not a Muslim, but a non-Muslim. I don't think there's another non-Muslim that is better than that man. And in the hadith itself, in, the, in some of the narrations, he said he asked the Prophet ﷺ about the man. And the Prophet ﷺ, in the beginning, he gave him a, an answer that's according to Islamic creed, meaning that if you're a Christian, you haven't accepted Islam, you're not in, in Jannah, you're not in paradise. And he said, that answer shook me. And then the Prophet ﷺ called him back. And he read upon the verse, And he mentioned that these men were not Christians, they were Muslims. They were trying to stick to the deen of Isa alayhi salam, the right deen. And they're not Christians. And that really lifted Salman's spirits. Anyways, so the man is replaced with another man, another priest. And as we said before, just a couple of seconds ago, Salman loved him and he was the best man that Salman can find. Now Salman radiallahu anhu stayed with the man for a while. After a short while, the man got sick as well and he passed away. But before he passed away, Salman went to him and he said, you know who I am and you know where I come from and I've loved you in a way that I have never, never loved anyone else. I have loved you in a way that I have never loved anyone else. And now you see, وَتَرَى مَا حَلَّ بِكَ مِنْ قَدْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And you see what's come upon you, meaning death. 
فمن توصيني إليه وما تأمرني so who would you recommend me to go to and what do you order me to do so the man said and he said يا بني والله ما أعلم أحدا اليوم على ما كنت عليه I don't know of anyone who's upon what I am upon today he says لقد هلك الناس people have gone astray وبدلوا and they've changed and they and they they've left out a lot of the things that are a part of Isa alayhi salam's religion and in another, in another narration the man says ما اعلم احد على دين عيسى اليوم i don't know of anyone who's upon the religion of Isa اليوم except for a man in Mosul and this is so telling that Salman narrates the story why because the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says in a hadith in sahih muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah nadara ila al khalq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked upon the creation فمقتهم, and he hated them he disliked them عربهم وعجمهم Arabs and non-Arabs إلا بقايا من أهل الكتاب except for a few remnants of the أهل الكتاب the people of the book meaning that at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was being sent there was no one on the earth on the face of earth who was upon the correct religion except for a remnant few people of Ahl al-Kitab. And this is what Salman radiallahu anhu's hadith is alluding to. So he says, except for a man in Mosul. So remember the story, I remember the distance. We've gone from Asbahan or Ram Hormuz all the way to Dimashq in Syria, Damascus. And now from Damascus all the way to Mosul, which is in Iraq. So he goes to Iraq after the, the person, the, the, his teacher has been buried and he goes to Iraq and he goes to the person who's he's been advised with and he says to him I'm so and so and I've been with your friend so and so and he told me to come here so he said and I want to stay and study and teach and, and learn with you and pray with you and be with you so the man says all right fine and he lets him stay with him and after a short while the man passes away again and now Salman needs to find a new person so he goes to him and says to him who can I go to and now uh, the man says to him go to a man in uh, Nasibin and Nasibin is not too far of Mosul it's just a, uh, after the border to going to uh, Turkey Mardin the, or the area today is called Mardin so he goes to him and finds the man and he says to him I'm so and so son of so and so and uh, uh, and he tells him his story basically so the man tells him all right you can stay fine you can stay with me and then he stays with him until the man gets sick and passes away and now he needs to find a new teacher so he says to him, where should I go? And he says, look, he says now, I don't know of anyone that's upon me, what I and my two other friends were upon, except for a man in Umuria, a place in Umuria, which is just south of Ankara, Turkey today. At the time, you'll find in the Hadith, it says Rum. Why? Because at the time, it was a part of the Roman Empire, of course. But... Since then, it's become a Muslim place, and people, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Muslim country, it's a part of Turkey, and so on and so forth. But in the hadith, you'll find that he says Bilad uh, al but the place is actually Umuria, which is just south of Ankara. So he went to him, and he stayed with him. And this time, he said, "I earned a few, uh, a few, a bit of cattle. I earned some sheep and some cows, and I worked there, and I stayed with the man until the man passed away." until the man passed away. And then he went to the man and said to him, where should I go now? He says, and this is the final nail in the coffin, he says, I don't know of anyone. There's no one left. I was the last one basically. Look at the search that takes him so long and until this man, and he's gonna continue searching of course, but look at the search for what, for the truth. So the man says to him, but you're in the time, an era, where a prophet's going to come. Ibrahim. He's going to have the religion of Ibrahim He's going to come out in the lands of the Arabs. Lands of the Arabs. He has signs that you'll not be able to miss. And before that he said, Muhajiran ila ardin bayna harratayni baynahuma nakhl. He's, he's going to come and he's going to emigrate to a city or a land that has two big mountains and between these mountains are date palms. And he has certain signs that you will not be able to miss. 
he's going to not eat, he's not going to eat from the sadaqah, charity food. He's not, he's, he doesn't eat that. He's going to eat hadiyah. If you give him a present, he's going to eat from it. Between his shoulders is khatam al nubuwa the sign, the seal of the prophethood. If you can go to him, then I advise you to go to him. So he says, I stayed, after the man passed away, I stayed behind in Umuriya, just waiting for the opportunity. And then, uh, after a while, a caravan, a caravan from the people of Kelb, the tribe of Kelb, came, came. And I asked them, I said, if I give you all my cows and all my sheep, would you be able to take me to the land of the Arabs? And they said, yes, of course. So they took them, they took him, they took him with, with them. And they went all the way to a place called Wadi Al-Qura. Wadi Al-Qura. Salman says, when they got to Wadi Al-Qura, ظلموني. they oppressed me. Why? What did they do? He said, they sold me to a Jewish man as a slave. Subhanallah. Look, his search for truth, look at what he, what he sacrificed. Remember, as we said in the beginning, he's Ibn Dihqan, he's the son of the chief of the village. He's not, he's not poor, he doesn't want for anything, but his search of truth put him in this state, in this condition, where he became a slave eventually. But he didn't panic, he didn't even care, subhanAllah. He said what? When he said that they took him to Wadi Al-Qura, the only thing he's focused on still is finding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, he says, I looked around and I saw date palms. So I had some hope that I'm in the right place. Ya Akhi, Ya Habibi, you, they've just sold you as a slave. He doesn't care. The only thing he cares about is to find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to find the truth, to accompany him, to be with him. And he said, but he said, it still didn't feel right. It didn't feel like they're exactly the right place. So he stay, said, I stayed around. And after a while, another Jewish man, the cousin of the first uh, owner, bought him and took him back to Medina. Another Jewish man from Bani Qurayza came and visited his cousin in Wadi Al-Qura. And he saw Salman and said, I want to buy him. So he bought him off his cousin and took him back with him to Medina. Now when he entered Medina, he sees the dates, he sees the mountains, he becomes so happy. He's, he's just been sold as a slave. He doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter for him. He's become so happy. Why? Because he said, as soon as I entered the city, I saw exactly what the man had described to me. I saw exactly what the man had described. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you really search for something and you really try to find the khair, the good, the haq, the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا Whoever strives in our cause, Put in the effort, strive, struggle, go from here to there, only to find the truth. What? What did Allah say? وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا That person will guide to our ways. But you need to also struggle. You need to also search the truth, as Salman did. And when you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you and guide you. Look, he was in Amuriya and something happened in his life. Because, subhanAllah, and this is exactly when he needed it. Because now he's in Umuriya and they described a place on earth in the lands of the Arab he would never be able to find. How would he know what city this is? But Allah, through Ar-Riq, through that slavery, through that man, th those people uh, oppressing him, he got all the way to Medina. And he got, when he got to Medina, he said, I spent some time in Medina and I heard about a prophet in Mecca. And then he came to Medina. He made hijrah. And he said, when he came to Medina, I was working in my uh, master's field, basically, his trees, his date palm trees. And then he said, my master was sitting down below, uh, beside the tree and I was climbing up the tree. So his, the master's cousin came, another cousin, not the first one, another cousin came and said, قَاتَلَ اللَّهُ بَنِي قِيلَ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse Bani Qila. And Bani Qila is a reference to Al Ansar, Al Aus wal Khazraj. Why are they called Bani Qila? Because their common mother, a common ancestor, which that is a mother, is called Qila. Her name was Qila. And she is basically the mother of Aus al Khazraj. So it's a sort of derogatory name for them. So he said, Qatal Allah Bani Qila. Wallahi innahum la mushtami'oon al ana bi quba. They're gathered right now in Quba 
which is just outside of, it's part of Medina, but at the time it was a bit outside of Medina. But today, the city has sort of swallowed up everything around it. So he said, they're gathered in Quba right now, together with a man, they claim to be a prophet. Came, that come from that, that has come from Mecca. Salman is obviously hearing this and he's up in the tree. He says, when I heard this, I was overtaken by a tremor. I feared that I would fall down onto my master. So he said, I climbed down really quickly. I climbed down really quickly. And I said to him, Mada taqul, mada taqul, what are you saying? What are you saying? And then his master got mad. His master got mad and slapped him and said, Ma hada what are you, This is not your business. Do your work. And he said, all right, fine, fine. I just wanted to confirm what he was saying. So Salman radiallahu anhu did what? He said, I went home after that night and I had saved some food, some stuff. And in some hadith, he mentions dates, dates. And he took them to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, here you go. I know that you're a righteous man. And your companions are strangers. And this is sadaqah, this is charity that I had prepared for some people, and I think you're the most deserving of it. So take it. So the Prophet ﷺ did what? He said to his companions, come, come eat. And Salman was observing. So he saw that the Prophet ﷺ did not lift his hand to eat a single day. So he, he said to himself, that's the first one. And then he went back. And he said, I started gathering food again. New set of dates, basically. And I went back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَقَدْ تَحَوَّلَ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ And he had moved from Quba to Medina now. So he went to him. And he said, I saw last time you didn't eat the dates that, were, that was a charity. These are a hadiyah. These are a gift for me to you. I want to honor you. So he said, Jazakallah khair, basically he said thank you. He took them and he ate from them. And he said to his companions to eat from them as well. So... Salman does what he says, هَذِهِ thaniya. that's the second one. The third one, he said, I went back to him a third time and he was in Baqi' al-Gharqad. Baqi' al-Gharqad, my siblings, is the cemetery, is the graveyard of Ahl al-Medina, the people of Medina. So if you've ever been to Medina, you'll see that there's a graveyard that's just outside the Prophet's mosque, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's basically whoever passes away in Medina is buried. So if you pass away in Medina, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you that blessing, you'll be buried in Al-Baqi'. So he said, I saw him in Baqi'. He was following uh, the burial of, of one of his companions. So I sat next to him and then I sort of turned around so I could see his back. And I'm trying to see the seal of prophethood. And the seal of Prophet, just as a side benefit, people think there's an actual seal. That's not what it is. Bud'atun min al najiz, as the scholars say, the, the Sahaba described the seal of prophethood, prophethood as a protruding bit of skin. So it's not a seal, it's not a tattoo, it's not nothing like that. It's just a bit of skin that's excessive, that uh, comes out, basically. And some of the scholars, they say it's, it's the size of a pigeon's egg. So it's not too big as well. And that's what he was trying to see. And now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees him and notices that he's trying to confirm something that's been described to him. رآني أستثبت ما وصف لي. So he took off his overgarment. Like you, the Arabs at the time, they had two garments on. One to cover your lower body and one to come, cover your upper body. So the upper garment, he took it off to let him see. And when Salman saw this, Ya Allah, his farah, his joy, his happiness. He said, فَانْكَبَبْتُ عَلَيْهِ أُقَبِّلُهُ أَبْكِي I sort of attacked him, I staggered toward him, hugged him, and I was crying and kissing him at the same time. SubhanAllah. And it's not strange. He's actually spending his whole life in search of this man. And he took his shahada. And then he, the Prophet ﷺ asked him, what's your story? So he regaled him the whole, like he told him the whole story from beginning to end. He says in the hadith, كَمَا حَدَّثْتُكَ يَا ابْنَ عَبَّاسِ Don't forget, in the beginning we said that he's telling this to Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما. So he says, I told him my story as I'm telling you right now, Ibn Abbas. Salman says, وَقَدْ شَغَلَيْنِي الرِّقُ عَنْ مَشَاهِدِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Because I was a slave, I couldn't really be present in some of the big events uh, with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he missed out on Badr, he missed out on Uhud. When he came to, after Uhud, 
The Prophet ﷺ advised him, he says, Katib Ya Salman. Katib Ya Salman. And Katib coming from the word Al Mukataba. It's basically a contract where the owner, the master, and the slave sort of define the terms of his freedom. They define the terms of the freedom. So basically, he says to the master, I want to be free. And the master says to him, uh, If you want to be free, you need to give me this and this and so on and so much. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ advised Salman to do. And he, فعلا, he went back to Sal, uh, the, his master and said, I, I need to be free. And he told him, you need to give me 300 date palms and 40 uqiyah, 40 uqiyah of the gold. In some narrations, it mentions gold. 40 uqiyah is a lot. It's a lot of gold. It's, it's a big amount. And the date palms as well. So the 300 date palms, uh, the Prophet وسلم, told the companions, "Aeenu akhakum, help your brother." So he said, "Fajaa al-rajul bi thalathina wadi." Wadi is basically a small one that has not really grown. You could try plant it. You could, you could remove it and plant it somewhere else. So they gave him one gave him thalathin, one gave him عشرين, one gave him خمستاشر, one gave him twenty, fifteen, ten, and so on. And he said, "And حتى اجتمعت عليه ثلاثمية." Until I gathered the three hundred date palms. Now they're small, so he needs to plant them. So the Prophet ﷺ tells him, go and dig the, the holes. And when you're finished, come and call me. So he went and dug it up and he had help from some of the companions as well. And then the Prophet ﷺ came and he planted with his own hands the trees. He said, biyadi." We would give him and he would plant it. And he said, not one of those tree, trees dies because there's obviously a risk that the tree dies when you move it from place to place which people that de deal with this agriculture stuff know when you move it from place to place there's a risk that the tree dies so he said ما ماتت منهم واحدا. none of them died and then he said the Prophet وسلم, was given some gifts from one of the uh, expeditions that the, the companions undertook and they brought back certain stuff. And one of the stuff that it brought back was a small piece of gold. Not nearly enough for what Salman needed. But even so, the Prophet ﷺ said, Mada fa'ala Salman al -mukatab? What did Salman do? What has he done with the gold? Because the, the date palms is finished, but the gold is left. Salman anhu came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I haven't really found anything. He said, take this and go pay. And he says to the Prophet ﷺ, what is this small piece of gold going to do? He said, khudha. Take it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it as a payment for, the, for them. So he went back and he said, Wallahi, I, I weighed it for them and it weighed exactly the amount that was needed, which is obviously by the blessing of the Prophet. And that's how Salman got free. And afterwards, he said, I, he was with Khandaq and obviously we don't have time to get into it. Khandaq, his rule was major. Why? Because when the when Quraysh came to the Prophet وسلم, in an army of 10,000 men and they wanted to attack Medina and sort of kill everyone who's in the city, that Salman came up with the idea that he'd brought up, been brought up with from Faris, from Persia. He said, my people, when these issues happen, they would dig a grave, they would dig a big hole Khandaq. And that was his idea that the Prophet وسلم, took from him and then dug the, uh, the, 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 the big hole, the Khandaq, as per the idea of Salman radiallahu anhu. And that's how the Muslims managed to stay alive during that war. Salman radiallahu anhu had also a brother called Abu Darda. And he was not his real brother by blood, but he, he was the, the brother that Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, chose for him. As you know, the Prophet وسلم, when he came to Medina, he made brothers between Muhajirin and Ansar. So Abdurrahman ibn Awf would take a brother from the Ansar, Umar ibn Khattab as well, and so on and so forth. And as they were not from Muhajirin or Ansar, basically, the Prophet وسلم, made them brothers. So uh, Abu Darda, Uwaymir, became uh, Salman al Faris's brother. And a beautiful story that happened with them is when Salman, who used to always visit Abu Darda and maybe spend the night with him. So he'd always stay over, spend the night, and then go back. And even when they sort of lived in different cities, if he knew that Abu Darda was living in a certain city, he would live with Abu Darda. That brotherhood kept, they kept it for life. So one night he went to Abu Darda and then he saw his wife. She was a bit like 
this, uh, like she, she didn't have the best of clothes, let's say. So he said, Mabiki, what, what's wrong with you? Why are you dressed like this? Why are you, why are you looking like this? So she said to, so she, she said to him, uh, Inna akhaka, your brother, la hajat alahu fi dunya. He, he has no need of dunya. And when Salman heard, it, heard this, he knew something is wrong. So he waited for Abu Darda to come home. And, he's, and Abu Darda, when he saw him, he said, oh, mashallah, Salman is here. He prepared a, a meal. When he prepared the meal, Salman told him, and this hadith, and this uh, riwayah also is, is in Bukhari. This hadith is in Al Sahih al-Bukhari. When he prepared the meal, he said to, uh, to, to Abu Darda, eat with me. Abu Darda says, what? He says, he's really not in need of anything with dunya to do. He's really like a worshiper, a abid, zahid. He says, I'm fasting. Salman doesn't accept it. He says, لا, والله لا أكل حتى تأكل. والله I won't eat until you eat with me. So, خلاص, it's his guest, he can't do anything really. So he sits, he sits down and eats with him. He eats with him, and then night times comes around, and they both go to sleep. And after a while, Abu Darda, when it's still really early, he goes up to pray. Salman tells him, sleep. And he says, I want to pray. He says, no, no, sleep. He orders him to sleep, roughly. So Abu Darda goes back to sleep. And then he gets up, like, in the middle of the night again, and he tries to, to pray again. Salman wakes up, he says, go, to, go back to sleep. He says, but I want to pray. He says, no, go to sleep. And then Salman waits until, like, it's a, the last part of the night, just before Fajr. And he wakes Abu Darda up and he says, now you pray. And then when the morning comes, he says, Inna li rabbika alayka haqq. Your Lord has a right upon you. Wa li nafsika alayka haqq. Your nafs has a right upon you. Your body, your soul. Wa li ahlika alayka haqq. And your family has a right upon you. Fa'ati kulla dhi haqqin haqqa. So give each and every one their right. And then in the morning, obviously Abu Darda was a bit annoyed. So they went to the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Darda was like saying, Ya Rasulullah, he stopped me from everything this night. And then when he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard the whole story, he said, Sadaqa Salman. Salman has spoken truth. Sadaqa Salman. So yeah, this was a little bit about Salman and his story. He was also a Zahid. So don't believe that just because Abu Darda was not a Zahid, was a Zahid that uh, Salman was not. No, just before his death, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas came and visited him and he said, uh, and he found him crying. So he said, what makes you cry? He said, Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akhada minna ahdan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us with an oath. And this is Salman radiallahu anhu. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas says to him, Anta tawaffa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa anka radin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and he was pleased with you. But Salman says what? He says, the Prophet ﷺ left us with an oath to only have from the dunya what a traveler needs. Not much. And he says, look around, I have all this stuff. I have a pillow, I have this and that. And Sa'ad says, I looked around and I could only find a, a, a vessel to drink from and a pot to eat with. That was basically what he had. And just before he passed away, he said to his maid, he said, Go and get me that thing that I entrusted you with to say, for safekeeping. So she, she brought it and she opened it and it was a bottle of misk. And he said, spray it on me. So she sprayed it on him, like put it on him. And he says, now leave me. For in a little while, creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to come who don't like food, but they like perfume. So she went down the stairs and she closed the door. And then when she came back, she found that his soul had left the body. رضي الله عنه ورحمه. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Salman and mercy on us as well and resurrect us with them on the day of judgment. Ameen. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.